Hello everyone, welcome back to this channel. This video aims to take a look at the fundamental of moss chip fabrication and the major steps of the process flow will be examined. This video is not meant to present a detailed discussion of silicon fabrication technology, which in itself is a huge topic, but rather is meant to briefly present some basic ideas and a general outline of the process flow of NMOS fabrication. This video is meant to introduce some terminology and some ideas into NMOS fabrication, where, and the next video aims to take a look at the general outline of the process flow in NMOS fabrication. So if you're interested, keep on watching. NMOS transistor's fabrication process is a detailed one. In order for us to briefly talk about the whole process, we must first clear up some terminology and introduce lithography. Integrated circuits can be viewed as a set of patterned layers on top of each other, and these patterned layers are either of doped silicon, polysilicon, metal, and insulating silicon dioxide. In order for us to create these patterned layers, we need to ensure that these layers are defined on chip by appropriate masks. The process used to transfer a pattern to a layer on the chip is called lithography. Since each layer has its own distinct patterning requirements, the lithographic sequence must be repeated for every layer using a different mask. To illustrate lithography, we will be taking a look at the fabrication steps involved in patterning silicon dioxide through optical lithography. Taking it from this silicon substrate that is empty to one that is covered with a patterned silicon dioxide layer on top of it. The first step in patterning the silicon dioxide layer is to start with the thermal oxidation of the silicon surface of the silicon substrate with an oxide layer of just to give an example. This entire oxide surface is then covered with photoresist, which is essentially a light sensitive acid resistant organic polymer, which initially in our case is insoluble. Once this photoresist is exposed to ultraviolet light, the exposed areas become soluble so that they are no longer resistant to etching solvents. To selectively expose this photoresist, we have to cover these areas or the areas that we would like to expose with a mask. Thus, when the structure with the mask on top is exposed to ultraviolet light, Areas that are covered by the opaque mask are shielded from the ultraviolet light and areas that are not are not shielded, therefore ultraviolet light can pass through. And in these areas, the photoresist is exposed and becomes soluble. Following the ultraviolet exposure step, the unexposed portions of the photoresist can be removed by a solvent. Now, we have the silicon dioxide regions that are not covered by the hardened photoresist visible and they can be etched away by either using a chemical solvent like hydrofluoric acid or by using a dry etch such as a plasma etch. Therefore at the end of this process or this step we will be obtaining an oxide window that reaches down to the silicon substrate surface. The remaining photoresist can be now removed by another solvent, leaving the now patterned silicon dioxide layer on the surface of the silicon substrate. The sequence of process steps illustrated in this example actually accomplishes a single pattern transfer onto the silicon dioxide surface. The fabrication of the semiconductor device, however, requires several such pattern transfers to different layers, whether they are the silicon dioxide layer, the polysilicon, and the metal. So we can use this example to understand lithography and the patterning process as we move on to explain the 
fabrication process of NMOS transistors. The type of photoresist that we talked about in this video is the positive photoresist, which is initially insoluble and becomes soluble after exposure to ultraviolet light. There is another type of photoresist, which is initially soluble and becomes hardened after exposure to UV light, and it's called negative photoresist. Negative photoresists are more sensitive to light, but their photolithographic resolution is not as high as that of a positive photoresist. Therefore, negative photoresists are less common in the manufacturing of high-density integrated circuits. Thank you for watching this video. And in the next one, we will be taking a look at a general outline of the process flow in NMOS fabrication. If you found this video useful, consider liking and sharing this video with your friends. And if you'd like to support the channel, you can do so through subscribing or supporting us through Patreon, which you can find the link for the Patreon page for this channel in the description below. And as always, thank you for watching.